Hi, my name is Xiao Ling. I'm from the National University of Singapore. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss how we can use stimulus response in materials for constructing self-powered autonomous systems and incorporating intelligence into materials. There are currently two main types of intelligence systems in our world right now. The first involves the biological systems, and the second involves the artificial intelligence that are based on electronics. These intelligent systems are very versatile, and we are now seeing a vast range of applications being developed from these systems. However, the man-made electronic systems have their disadvantages, and that include being incompatible to certain environments such as the human body for biomedical applications. And of course, that includes the very important field of drug delivery. And therefore, there's a need to extend the concept of intelligence to materials in general, and not just for electronic-based systems. Before we look at how we can incorporate intelligence into materials, let's look at the definition of a primitive form of intelligence. That can consist of three main elements. The first is to sense the signals from the surrounding environment. The second is to analyze that detected signal. The third then is to respond to the surrounding in a logical manner that is dependent on the analyzed detected signal. Here we have a good example of a living cell that may involve the sensing components, the analytical functions and the practical functions. So how can we incorporate intelligence into materials? Here we have previously published this review article where we discuss the use of stimulus response in materials for constructing the intelligent materials. Stimulus response materials are used because they are able to sense the signals from the surrounding environment. And in addition to that, they can also use the stimulus as the power for driving the operations of the functions of these materials. And after reviewing the many different types of functions developed from the stimulus response materials from many different research groups all across the world, we now see that there are many different types of functions being developed. And that includes the practical functions, for example, motion, communication, capture and release, regulatory functions, and some very primitive types of analytical functions. And because these types of functions are developed based on stimulus responsive materials, we can now call these functions the stimulus responsive functions. The hope here is to combine the different types of stimulus responsive functions into a complex system that one day may be considered intelligent. This is an artistic impression of what an uh, intelligent material may look like. Here, we propose to incorporate the sensing elements and the way to obtain the power for driving the functions and to incorporate the analytical functions and practical functions. And these functions may include all the different types of stimulus responsive functions developed by different research groups from all around the world. And by combining all these functions, we may one day be able to incorporate intelligence into materials. This approach is interdisciplinary. It depends on not just chemistry, physics, material science, but more importantly, it also relies on engineering and design. In the following slides, I'm going to talk about two examples for how we can incorporate intelligence into materials. The first example is to use very simple materials and to establish the relationship of these materials to advanced mathematical functions. And in this case, we are going to look at the advanced mathematical functions of the derivative. The illustration here is as such, the importance of the derivative controller is because most stimulus responsive materials only respond proportionally to the detected signal. And in this case, for example, we respect the time when the material starts to detect a signal, the, even though the rate of change of the signal is very big, it does not respond at all until when the difference is very big. But when there's a very big difference, it may already exceed some kind of undesirable threshold that makes the situation undesirable. And therefore, there is a need to analyze the derivative. Whenever there is a large rate of change of the detected signal, the controller or the material may then be able to respond immediately 
and therefore be able to bring down the undesirable detected signal to the desirable level. This type of operation may be useful for a lot of different types of applications, including for the case of controlling the release for the field of drug delivery. The question here is how can we design a simple material that can analyze the derivative of the surrounding environment? Here we have a slab of stimulus responsive hydrogel and we coat one side of this hydrogel with the impermeable elastomeric layer. And because one side is impermeable, only one other side of this hydrogel receives the signal and contract. And because only one side contracts, the hydrogel bend in this particular manner. And the rate of bending then is the way to sense the derivative. So this material here is an asymmetric material. It's not a bilayer. And the reason is because we have used a very flexible elastomer. And because of this very flexible elastomer, the mechanical property only depends on the hydrogel and not on the elastomer. And because of this highly adaptive material, we found that it is capable of doing the analysis of the derivative. Here from our experimental results, we see that whenever we have a faster rate of change of pH with respect to time introduced into the surrounding medium, we see that the hydrogel will bend at a faster rate than if the rate of change is slower. And because the material senses only the temporal derivative, it is not dependent on the absolute magnitude of the pH. Here we show that whenever the amount of pH is constant with respect to time, regardless of what the pH is, it can be pH 2 to pH 12, the hydrogel is always in a flat state. It doesn't bend. So from these experimental results, we can conclude that the simple piece of material does sense the temporal derivative and not the absolute value of the pH. We have performed some numerical analysis and theory, and what we found is that there is a mathematical relationship between the rate of bending and the temporal derivative. Here we found that the rate of bending scales with the square root of the temporal derivative. Not just that it can sense the temporal derivative, we can also use it for controlled release of drug molecules. For example, here, whenever we have this material, we can lay it on top of a chemical reservoir or a reservoir that contains drug molecules. And because the material controls based on the temporal derivative, this controller or this control release can also be used for analyzing the surrounding temporal derivative. Here we show experimentally that whenever the pH is constant, regardless whether it is pH 10 or pH 12, we see that there is no release of the chemical from the reservoir with respect to time. But whenever there is a change in pH, for example, from pH 7 to pH 11, there's release of the chemical from the chemical reservoir. These different lines indicate different rates of change of the pH from 7 to 11. And what we found is that the faster the rate of change of the pH, the faster the release of the chemical from the reservoir. We also demonstrated the experiments using a different range of pH, and we found a very similar set of results. So in conclusion, we have shown that controlled release can be performed based on analyzing the temporal derivative and not the absolute magnitude of the pH. If we now include not just any chemical within the chemical reservoir, but now we, now we allow it to contain acidic solution, then we'll be able to build a full control of pH that is based on analyzing the temporal derivative. In this case, if we use a disturbance of a basic solution, it will be able to allow the hydrogel to open and then be able to release acid into the surrounding environment and therefore be able to control the pH. Here we see that from experiments, we will be able to control the pH at the desired pH value that we want. So in short, we have fabricated a full controller in a particle that includes the sensing element, the computational ability, actuation and release. And what we found from literature is that calculus or specifically the derivative has always been performed using a computer. So this is the first demonstration that 
calculus can be performed without the use of a computer. In my next example, I will show that how we can construct logic gates via design of the stimulus response hydrogels. Here in this case, we have two stimulus response hydrogels. The first is the pH response hydrogel. The second is a temperature response hydrogel. We stack them close to each other, and then we have a piece of flexible elastomer. And then we also have the outlet channel that links to a chemical reservoir. So what we can see here is that we can construct the OR gate. For example, if both the hydrogels are now in their contracted states, we can see that they do not push out the flexible elastomer, and therefore it allows the outlet channel to be open and for releasing the drug molecules. But if one of the hydrogels expands, the expanded hydrogel will now push out the flexible elastomer and therefore blocking the outlet of the channel and preventing the release of drug molecules. Because it only requires one of the hydrogels to expand, here we can establish the all logic gate. And via design, we can also construct the end gate. For example, here, if we just include a little gap in between the two hydrogels, we will need the two hydrogels to expand in order for the hydrogels to expand into the gap between the hydrogels and also to push out the flexible elastomer. And in this case, because we need both hydrogels to expand, we have fabricated the end gate. And based on the same kind of approach of design, if we have the different placement of the hydrogels and the different design of the valve controlling the outlet of the channel, we are able to fabricate different types of logic gates, including the NAND gate, the NOR gate. And in this case, we can also fabricate integrated circuits that involves the combination of different logic gates. And in this case, we have demonstrated the combination of the N and OR gates. We have also demonstrated the case of the N and NOR gates. And not just the construction of the integrated logic gates, we show that we can also use the logic gates for controlled release by combining the logic gates together with a reservoir of chemicals. And here again, we see that the release of the chemical depend on the logical sequence, for example, for the case of OR gate and for the integrated circuit of N plus the OR gates. Because we have shown that the integrated circuits can be used for controlled release, we believe that we will be able to fabricate smart particles that include massive number of these logic gates fabricated on the surface of this particle for performing high level analytical functions of the surrounding environment. So in conclusion, we have seen that we can incorporate analytical functions into materials. And we have shown two approaches. The first is to use just simple materials and establish direct relationship between the materials and advanced mathematical functions, for example, calculus. We have also shown that we can construct integrated circuits from just the design of the stimulus response hydrogels. Here, we have illustrated that High-level analytical abilities can be achieved by this interdisciplinary approach that involves material science, chemistry, physics, and importantly, engineering and design. So the last conclusion here is that we now have the ability to combine complex analytical functions and practical functions that allow us to construct truly self-powered autonomous intelligent materials. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much.